struggling to produce power on your 200 backhand. Maybe you feel like you have a little bit of power, but you want more. If that's the case, then you've clicked on the right lesson because in this video, I'm gonna show you three ways that you can increase the power with your 200 backhand. Hey everyone, Coach Simon here with Top Tennis Training and let's get stuck in right away. Now the first way to get more power is to ensure that our swing will help us actually produce racket head speed. Anything that will increase the racket head speed will give us more power. So if our swing is very labored, it's very slow, or we don't have enough space to actually accelerate, we'll struggle to generate power. A lot of players who struggle to generate power on their backhand end up having the racket very low. So the first way to produce more power is to ensure that you have the racket head higher than the grip level. So we have the racket head and we have the grip. Now the higher you lift it, the more space you'll have to actually accelerate the racket head. So if you're playing on a slower court, for example, clay or slow bouncing hard court, you can actually produce this higher swing like a Zverev or Sharapova and still make contact out in front. However, if you're playing on faster courts like grass, indoor carpet or fast hard court, that bigger swing, that higher loop will maybe cause issues with your timing. So we have a swing which is just a normal back and forward swing and this is where the racket head is level with the grip. Then we have the Zverev backhand where the racket head is directly above the grip, but we also have the in-between, which is what Djokovic, Agassi, Safin, Nalbanian, and countless other great 200 backhand players have used. And this is where the racket head is not directly above, it's not level, it's in between both. Now by having this swing, you're generating that leverage in the rack ahead and in the arms. Leverage basically means force over that oncoming ball. You have the space that you need to actually build up momentum and rack ahead speed, but you don't require a vast amount of time. So it's the ideal backhand position, and this is somewhere around here. Now, if you reach the power position where your right shoulder is turned towards the net, you have the rack ahead in this position here, you have that space to then accelerate. From here, you now have the space required to actually build up that racket head speed. As you can see, it's very easy for me to produce that racket head speed, which will then give me more power. Another way to generate more power on your two-handed backhand is to lean into that ball and produce that body weight transfer as we make contact. Ideally, this is done with either a neutral stance where the feet are in the same line so neutral stance or semi-closed stance either way you want to have your body weight starting on the back leg when you're in that power position so left leg here is taking about 80% of my body weight and then have this heel to toe motion with the front foot. So it's heel to toe. Now, if I can imagine that I'm going from back leg to front leg, I will have to shift my body weight. That will then increase the power that I can produce on that two-handed backhand. So it's left leg, right leg into the bowl. Imagine that you're leaning into that shot. So the right shoulder is almost leaning into the ball as you make contact. So it's Left leg, lean into the ball. Left leg, lean into the ball. And if you can pull this off, you'll see a massive amount of power being produced because of that body weight transfer. You're producing a more linear swing that will help you to flatten out that shot as well from the back leg to the front leg 
after I make contact, I now follow the ball. So I'm following the ball and I'm allowing my hips to uncoil. What we don't want to be doing when we're trying to transfer the weight is going here and stopping. Now my hips are blocked, the rotation is blocked off. But if I go from here and I allow the hips to open up, I allow my left leg to pivot around the right foot, this allows me to uncoil properly and really produce that aggressive power. So it's left, right, uncoil, and then push back in to the right position. Now very often we don't have time to actually step in and use that body weight transfer. So let's say we're being rushed for time, we're being pushed out wide, for example, on the run, we still want to be able to produce power. And we can do this using the open stance, but that rotational power. So it's this coil of the upper body, storing the energy in my core muscles, especially the obliques, and from here, uncoiling. The faster I can uncoil, the more rack air speed will be produced. So if the ball is coming quick and I choose to go open stand, it's coil, uncoil. Coil, uncoil. Once again, it all starts with that coil at the beginning of the stroke, separating the shoulder from the hip. So here, storing the energy and then releasing the energy. Storing, releasing. Storing, releasing. Now, if you want more help with your two-handed backhand, we have a free backhand guide that you can download right away. I'll leave the link beneath this video. All you have to do is click on the link that will take you to our website, simply enter your email address, and we'll send you that free PDF right away. So there you have it, three ways that you can increase the power on your two-handed backhand. Now, if you've enjoyed this lesson, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, of course, and turn on the notification bell. If there are any lessons you'd like to see from us in the near future, leave a comment down below. Signing off, Coach Simon from T2T, all the best and see you soon.